Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. So a few days ago, I posted this photo on Instagram and I said that I actually edited this image on my iPhone. And in fact, most of my posts on Instagram were actually edited on my iPhone. I personally love editing on my phone. I find it so much more convenient than editing on my computer back here. Don't get me wrong, I love my desk setup, but there's just something about editing on my iPhone that I really, really enjoy. So today in this video, I wanna talk about number one, why I love to edit on my iPhone so much, some of the positives and negatives of editing on an iPhone or a mobile device, and number three, my exact iPhone editing workflow, all the way from getting the photos from my camera to my iPhone, the editing process, as well as exporting and uploading as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And before we get started, I just wanna remind you, I'm giving away a free orange and teal preset pack. There's six free presets in there for you guys. There's a link in the description, click that, download those, those are free for you, and I hope you guys enjoy them. Okay, so why do I love editing on my iPhone so much? And there's actually three reasons why I love editing on my iPhone. Number one, I am incredibly lazy. Yes, I can sit at this, this awesome desk set up here um, and edit my photos on my computer, and I do that, but I much prefer laying back in bed and editing my photos on my phone or maybe on a couch somewhere or maybe on the beach. I love just having access to my photos on a small device that I can kick back in uh, and edit in a more comfortable position. So for lazy people like me, mobile editing is definitely a perk. And number two is convenience. Editing on a small device allows you to bring that device anywhere. So say for example, I'm at the grocery store, I'm waiting in line. Instead of just opening my phone and browsing stupid mindless apps, I can actually open my Lightroom editing app on my phone and fiddle around with some photos. And some of my favorite edits actually occurred when I was standing in line or I was waiting for something and I just pulled out my phone to mess around with some edits. I've actually created some pretty awesome edits in those scenarios. So I love just having access to my photos anywhere at any time. So from a convenience standpoint, mobile editing really is awesome. And the third reason, which is why I actually started editing on my iPhone in the first place is color accuracy. So like many photographers that post on Instagram, I was getting super frustrated with the way that my photos were looking after I exported them from my computer and looked at them on my iPhone. They looked completely different and I was super frustrated by that. So I found myself actually finishing off each of my edits on my mobile phone so I knew exactly what they would look like before I went and posted them. And that's what allowed me to figure out how to fit mobile editing into my actual photo editing workflow for Instagram. And that leads us to today where pretty much every single one of my photos on Instagram was edited on my phone. But what does my actual workflow look like? How do I get the photos from my camera to my iPhone? How do I edit them? How do I export them? Well, that entire process actually starts on the computer. So let's jump over to the computer and I'll show you guys my exact workflow. Okay, here we are at the desk. And the reason why everything starts here is because realistically, as a professional photographer where I'm dealing with a thousand, two thousand photos, every time I go out and shoot, I cannot realistically organize and edit all of those images on my iPhone. We're just not there yet with iPhone storage and things like that. So of course it all has to start on the computer. Um, and to keep everything organized, I use external hard drives. I'm using a two terabyte Extreme Pro SanDisk uh, SSD. It's amazing, I love it so much. And I organize pretty much all of my images on hard drives like these. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys are looking for a good external SSD. So once I get back from a shoot, the first thing I do is I plug in my SD card into my computer and I open that SD card up in Finder on my desktop. So I have all the photos here. I think they're under DCIM. And okay, so these are all the photos from my last shoot in Nusa Panita. And then what I'll do is I'll open up my external hard drive and I'll create a folder under the date with the name uh, Nusa Panita trip. So this is the trip that we went on. And then I'll just go ahead, command A, drag and drop those photos onto that external hard drive. I've already done that. So you can see all my photos here in the hard drive already. Um, now, after I drag those over, I open them up in Adobe Bridge. Now Adobe Bridge is, I believe it's free, uh, and it's basically just a photo organization software. You can, you can keep track of all of your images and you can also sort through them and organize them. And it's much, much faster than using something like Lightroom, uh, where Lightroom has to create previews and importing takes forever, especially if your computer is slow. So if you use something like Bridge, uh, we all we have to do is navigate to the folder where our photos are located 
and then we can see all of them here. And the previews load so fast with Bridge, that's why I like it. And I love it too, because you can see all of the settings here, all the metadata, which is great. You can see, uh, you know, the size of the photo, the f-stop, the shutter speed, et cetera, the white balance, everything is there. Uh, and it's really, really good for sorting photos as well. And that's why I use it. So I open up the photos here, I hit space bar, and then I can just hit the arrow keys and move between all of my images that I just dragged over into that hard drive. And what I do, this is how I like to sort my photos. I either give my photos five stars or zero stars. If they're five stars, that means I like them, they're selects, and I wanna, I wanna try editing them. If they're not five stars, uh, if there's no stars, then they're basically not selects. They're, they're not something I wanna import into Lightroom. They're not something I want to edit. Uh, but after I go through all of my photos and I make my selects, you can use this really handy little feature down here um, called filters. Now you can filter for all kinds of things, focal length, aperture, exposure, etc. But what we're gonna do is just filter based on these stars. So these are all of my selects now. These are all the photos that I went through and I selected. And then what I can do is hit Command A or just select all of these photos, right click and hit move. And then I can go ahead and choose a folder and I'll just add a folder into our original folder and I'll name it selects. And then I'll move our photos there. So, so now all of our selects are in a different folder and now I can go ahead and import those photos into Adobe Lightroom. And to do that, it's pretty simple. Just click on our hard drive here, navigate to the folder that we were just using um, and then click selects. So these are all the selects. I'll just import to the catalog, boom. And then Lightroom is going to add these to Lightroom and build previews here. So it's building standard previews here. And this is gonna take, if you if you have a lot of selects, this could take a long time. Um, I try to import as few photos as possible. It just saves a lot of space with previews. Now, this is where the mobile stage comes into play because now that we've gone through, we've we have all of our photos safe on a hard drive. We've gone through and we've selected our favorites. Now we can send them over to our phones. Now to do that with Lightroom Classic, all you have to do is put those photos into a collection and then sync that collection over to your mobile device. Now you have to have Adobe Creative Cloud for this. You cannot do this without Adobe Creative Cloud. Obviously I'm using Lightroom and Photoshop, so I'm paying the $10 or a month or whatever for Creative Cloud, but for me it's a deal. And I also get, I think, one or two terabytes worth of cloud storage, which is perfect for all of my photos. I don't have that many photos, but what I like to do is go down to my collections here and I find my favorite images. So we'll just say, you know, some of these are my favorites here. I'll go through and make more selects from those selects. And then I'll just drag and drop them over to main edits. Now for me, this main edit collection contains all of the photos that I think I might wanna post on Instagram. And this is always synced to my Lightroom mobile. And you can sync a collection by just hitting this little charge icon here on the bottom. So if I wanted to sync this, this uh, collection with Kells, we did a little photo shoot. I just have to click that and then it'll sync with my mobile device or any device that is running Adobe Lightroom, uh, including a tablet or other computers or things like that. But main edits for me is where I have all the photos that I'm thinking about posting on Instagram. And I also have some other collections synced as well. Say I didn't have time to go through and select all my photos and I wanna, I'm gonna be on the road and I just wanna check them out. I'll just add an entire folder to a collection and then I'll sync that collection so I can see those on my phone. And then when I open up Lightroom Mobile on my phone, all I have to do is scroll down and we're gonna see all of the collections that are synced from Lightroom Classic. And of course, down at the bottom here is my main edits folder, which I said before is for Instagram. We already have the photos that I synced over from Lightroom Classic, so that's amazing. So let's go through and edit one of these photos here. I'm just gonna choose a random one. The ones I actually uploaded were just example images. I'm not really gonna be editing any of those for Instagram, but this is a really cool photo of my friend Kelsey. Um, in my basic editing process for this, this isn't an editing video per se, this is a workflow video, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. But what I would personally do is just apply one of my presets. Um, these are my portrait presets. Um, and maybe just, uh, yeah, that one looks pretty good. Uh, make some fine little adjustments, bring down the, the contrast a little bit, maybe make it a little bit softer in the tone curve. Um, 
and I would give it a crop as well, four by five crop. And that looks pretty good. Like I said, it's not an editing video, so I'm just gonna edit this quickly. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe just bring the warmth up. Okay, and then all I have to do is tap this little save icon on the top and then hit export to camera roll. And then I can easily go into Instagram and then upload that photo here on Instagram. Not my videos of my cat, the photo of Kelsey. <laughs> So it's pretty simple. That is essentially the workflow that I follow. Now, some people are gonna say, oh, you shouldn't do this because you're actually not exporting the raw photo from your iPhone. You're only exporting a smart preview. And that is true. You are gonna lose a little bit of quality because this is technically just a smart preview um, and not the actual raw photo. But what's so good about Lightroom Mobile and Adobe Creative Cloud is any changes I make on my mobile phone or on my computer will sync back to each other. So I can edit the entire image on my phone and then go ahead and export it from my computer. All the settings are gonna be there. Yes, I have to go back to my computer to get the final edit, but that's okay because I'm doing most of the editing on my phone. I know the colors are gonna look accurate and then I'll just export it from my computer later. And if I do export it from my computer, I add it to a Dropbox folder, which is synced to my phone. So I can just upload it to Dropbox on my computer, download it onto my phone, and that's a full res export that I can go ahead and upload to Instagram on my phone. Now there are a few features that do not exist in Lightroom Mobile that do exist in Lightroom Classic. And the two main features that are missing from Lightroom Mobile are the range mask feature, which allows us to make really specific selects. Um, and if you guys wanna learn more about that, I have an entire video on selective adjustments in Lightroom and how you can do so much more on your desktop than you can on your phone. You can make select selective adjustments on your phone, but not quite to the same level as you can on Lightroom Classic. And the other thing that's missing from Lightroom Mobile are the color calibration sliders, which are these little things down here, which allow us to really edit uh, the colors in our images and do a lot with that. So unfortunately, Lightroom Mobile does not have those things, but like I said, having Adobe Creative Cloud allows us to easily edit on both of our devices and those edits will stay the same across all devices. The edits will update over the cloud. So that's a very nice feature to have. But in short guys, that is my mobile editing workflow. And like I said, I do this for pretty much every single one of my photos, unless there's a photo that requires a little bit more heavy manipulation like Photoshop or something, then I'll go ahead and edit on my computer. But most of the images that I edit do not require Photoshop and the color calibration sliders do translate over using presets and my presets all have that. So it's not something I have to worry about. But I think mobile editing is at a good place and I think it's only gonna get better from here. I'm excited to get an iPad and start editing on that. I think the workflow is gonna look exactly the same for my iPad. I'm just gonna be syncing over my photos using Adobe Creative Cloud um, and editing on my mobile device. That way I don't have to carry around a hard drive to edit on it. It's very, very efficient. Um, and overall, I'm pretty happy with the quality. But I wanna hear from you guys. Do you guys like to edit on your phones? Is your workflow a little bit different from mine? Is there any way I can improve mine? I'm always looking to learn as well. This is just what I find works for me, uh, but I'm always open to learning about new workflows to help with producing more good images uh, in a more convenient and efficient way. But that is it for me, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again next week.